Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing this beautiful dog. To get started, we're going to take our number two pencil. I'm going to be using a slightly thicker pencil so that you can see. And let's start with the dog's nose. So we're going to have this circle. It's almost a bit of a square. And then there's a couple of half circles coming out in a smile from the nose. And then let's draw the eyes. So there's a half circle and then another half circle and you want it to be a little bit wider than the nose but not too much and then we'll draw a little bit smaller half circles underneath and then we're going to fill most of it in you're going to want to leave a white spot for the highlight for the pupil Then you're going to want to take a step back, make sure you like the way that the eyes look. When you're happy with it, you fill in the nose. Now this dog is all about texture. So we have big fluffy ears. It's almost like a big triangle coming off of the side and then he's got fluffy oval making of his head or her head then a fluffy triangle on the other side This almost makes me think of a bob haircut on a human. And we'll draw in the collar. With a nice big circle. And then the fur comes almost all the way out. And then it does come out to the edge. And we're going to want this to be the leg. Is he sitting down or she's sitting down? And then we want the front leg and foot. We're not going to be drawing all the fur right now, but we do want to have an idea of where we want the fur to be. Take a step back. Face looks a little long to me, so I'm going to bring the nose up a bit. Now I'm just making adjustments to the rest of the body outline to correspond with the face. Good idea to take a step back. I notice my collar is up a little high. Bring that down a bit. You can always use the grid technique.
But since this dog has a very furry complexion, I wanted to use a freestyle approach to drawing. I noticed that this foot is up a little bit higher from the right foot. This is just a rough sketch right now to give us an idea of how the dog's body should look. Once you're happy with your dog outline, then we can start to add in the color. I'm going to erase some of the excess marks because we are going to be doing a lighter fur color and I want to make sure the color shows through. You can leave some of the sketch marks so you have an idea of how you want the fur to land on the page. But we want the color to shine through. Every dog in nature is going to look a little different. So it's good if yours looks different than mine. Once we erased a lot of the pencil marks, let's take a sandy brown and start adding in the fur. So you want the pencil to go the direction the fur is going. So in the head, there's a lot of different directions. So it's going down for the ears, and then it pops up a bit in the middle, and then it's going horizontally. Almost like whiskers from the nose out. And then there's a bit of a highlight on the right hand side, so we want the left hand side to be a little bit darker, and we want the right hand side to be a little bit lighter. And we want these to be pretty big strokes that you can see, because this dog has long fur hair. And then the feet 
They're mostly white fur, so we want to leave some highlight there. And then this back leg that's sitting down, there's a lot of curved lines to follow the curve of the leg. Highlight right here, and then I want to make more of a highlight in the middle. Oh, I'm going to use my eraser, take some of the color away right there. Okay, so these colors look exactly the same, they're both sandy brown but they're slightly different. This one is bronze yellow and this one is Sierra. So there is gonna be a slight change in the color. So I'm going to use the Sierra Sandy Brown to start adding in some shadow. We're going to see a lot of shadow, particularly on the left side. And in the ears. This will help make the ears stand out. We want to keep that highlight that we just worked on. There's a lot of shadow right here. So you can see that even though these colors are very similar, there is some variation which is good and it helps keep our dog looking three dimensional but also keeps that color tone that we're looking for. We want to keep these long strokes even when we're working on the shadow. This is the opposite of when we blend. We want to see everything that we, every line we're creating. Now let's take our dark brown and I'm going to emphasize the eyes. This is the most important part because it shows the dog's emotions, where the dog is looking, whether the dog is happy. Or in this case, maybe he's looking for his bone or her bone. And then let's add in some more shadow. Even when we have patches that don't have a lot of shadow, we want to add in a couple of strands here and there of this dark brown to show behind the strands of fur. We also want to put in a literal shadow. Underneath the dog to show where he or she is sitting. Let's 
take a break from the fur from right now and let's work on the collar. So I'm using a magenta collar. You can use whatever your favorite color is, green, blue, red, and I'm going to use purple for the center, and then I'm going to highlight the metal, and then take some of our sandy brown and fill in that space. We go back to the fur, let me take light brown and add in some light brown strands. This adds a bit of red coloring. Then if we want to blend it a little bit, and also get rid of some of that white, and take a tan. And go over it. But we don't want to lose those strokes that we worked so hard to get. So this is mostly just to fill in any white spaces. Then we can take our sandy brown and add in a bit more lines. So let's move on to the background and draw the baseboard, which is a rectangle with a smaller rectangle over top. You can use a ruler for this if you'd like. And to keep the color palette consistent, I'm going to be using that magenta color from the collar for the walls. But you can make the walls any color that you like. I'm going to take that tan we use to blend. And make a beige baseboard. And let's take our number two pencil and draw a bone. So we have a half circle with a line with a full circle. And then there's a half circle and another half circle. And then almost a triangle in the back. And let's use that tan. Color in the bone. And let's take the purple we used for the collar and create this tube toy. It's like a pancake. It's got two lines coming down, two lines going across, and then some circles to connect it all. You can also draw a ball. Or if you have a dog at home, whatever your dog's favorite chew toys are. And then we have one more chew toy. We're going to draw a bullseye. And then we're going to draw stripes of the purple and magenta.
when instead of just drawing striped lines, I'm using the stippling or dot technique. So you can see the texture of the chew toy. Okay, once you have your chew toy drawn, then you can take your light brown that we used in the doll. And then I'm just going to draw the carpet. So I'm going horizontally. Drawing short lines like carpet. These lines extend across. If you prefer hard wood, you could draw that. You would be doing horizontal lines as opposed to the horizontal up and down vertical lines. You can change the color, you can use the tile, you can get creative with the flooring. We want to see the texture. It's also a nice contrast to the texture of the dog. And finally, let's take our dark brown and add some shadows. There you have it. That's our dog. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We have library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.